Meteorologist Danielle Noyce here for the One Degree Outside Weather Network. This is your insights, and here's what we're going to cover in this video today. Scattered showers and thunder on Friday. We'll talk about the timing of those. Small hail possible again in some of the thunderstorms that develop on Friday. Holiday weekend update so you can make your plans through Labor Day in this unofficial end to summer. Don't forget to check out our new stream launched on Wednesday, New England's first continuous weather stream. If you have a smart TV, you can open the YouTube app and search one Degree Outside Network and watch it that way. If you have our app, which is free by the way, thousands of five-star reviews, you'll notice one small change at the top. You'll be able to tap to watch the stream there, but of course our individual videos are right below that. And you can always just go to OneDegreeOutside.live to watch as well. Meanwhile, let's start with the thunderstorm threat tomorrow. We're gonna to talk about a couple different elements coming together and at play here. First, temperatures at 6,000 feet. Okay, why are we looking at this? Well, notice the red line here uh, south of Hudson Bay. This is some real cold air aloft. And what does it do? It swings down into the Great Lakes this evening, Thursday evening and night. And some of that cold air, at least in moderated form, is right over New England during the day on Friday and into the start of the weekend as well. So that does a couple things. Even though it's not going to be that warm at the surface, for our Friday, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, because it is colder aloft, that does create instability in the atmosphere. It also means some lightning production may be possible. Now, in terms of the threat for any severe storms, we like to look at some of the storm energy at play. You'll notice low energy is in blues. So there's not a ton tomorrow to work with. What I will say is by midday and early afternoon, we do get a little bump up here from Southern New Hampshire into Worcester County, into Eastern Connecticut, Northern Rhode Island, and Eastern Massachusetts tomorrow, th Friday afternoon and evening. It's not overly impressive in terms of the amount of storm energy, but that tells me, at least in central and eastern areas of the southern half of New England, there'll be a threat for thunderstorms, particularly from about lunchtime until the early evening hours. And you're gonna see that in play here. We may get a couple of showers in the morning and a little band that comes and swings through from west to east over the course of the morning hours tends to kind of weaken in eastern areas by the time we get to mid to late morning. That said, you also notice firing up by late morning and midday in those same areas that we just took a look at with the thunderstorm energy, scattered action developing, some deeper cores in here, yellows and oranges, just like the day on Wednesday when we had some heavy downpours that came through. They're brief, but you get some lightning and maybe even some small pea-sized hail because of that instability and that cold air aloft. So particularly from lunchtime onward, keep an eye to the sky. A couple of the storms could be on the feisty side tomorrow as they swing through with some brief gusty wind as well. And then by the evening, a lot of the action is shifting east. There may be a few storms that linger on the south shore of the south coast and particularly in central and eastern Maine during the evening. But a lot of the rest of us are quieting down. Some patchy fog develops and there'll be variable clouds as well. Now, we have been in a deficit for rainfall. This is a map of the last 30 days. And I'm showing you this because when I show you the next map, you're going to see the pattern, right? So from Hartford to Worcester, stretching back into northeastern Massachusetts, we've been okay with some of the localized thunderstorms and showers that have come through. But a lot of the northern, really two-thirds of the region are in a deficit in the last 30 days alone, of about two to three inches of rain. Same for the south coast. So the drought monitor, which is updated every Thursday and takes the last Tuesday to Tuesday's precipitation into effect, Notice the pattern, right? In some of the areas which have had rain, we are not in drought. The most noticeable change this week has been an expansion of drought conditions across the northern two-thirds of New England, and particularly from the Mass New Hampshire and Mass Vermont border into portions of the Route 2 quarter. We now have moderate, moderate drought that has expanded and been added in here. So yes, we could use the rain. And unfortunately, there's not much in the forecast here over the next several days, aside from the thunderstorms that come through on Friday, and again, that's not guaranteed that everyone sees a soaking rain, you may get quarter to three quarters of an inch in some of the downpours that come in, but it's not like it's a steady soaking rain that we need. But it does mean it's nice for outdoor plans this weekend. For the map on Saturday, high pressure building into the Great Lakes, we still have the upper level low over us, so that may mean some lingering showers in northern New England. Heavy rain down across the southeastern United States with some localized flooding and also some thunderstorms that crop up and remain kind of stationary Saturday into Sunday over the northern and central plains. Some big time heat down across Texas as well. So what does it mean for us for our Labor Day weekend forecast? Well, I'd say Friday, 
If you had to pick, you know, the worst day of the bunch, that would be it, just because we have showers and thunderstorms in the forecast, and it's one of the coolest days. Saturday, some showers in far northern New England. I think a lot of us are dry, low 70s, so slightly cooler than average. By the way, each day, the humidity is in check, and it's fairly low. It goes up briefly, not oppressive by any means, but briefly on Saturday in southern and eastern New England. And then Sunday and Labor Day itself, really pleasant, mid to upper 70s. You'll notice a theme, which is the next several days, there's going to be an onshore wind at the coastline. So sea breezes do kick in, and that will mean a little bit cooler for us right along the shoreline compared to those through the interior. So Saturday, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine, still seeing that counterclockwise spin in that upper level low, which may spin up a couple of showers. It is not going to ruin the day on Saturday. There'll be more clouds in those areas, too, for the far north country. Otherwise, each day we start with sun, we start with a cool, crisp morning, and then we get some building clouds. That includes for Sunday, too, maybe still a shower in northern Maine, but most of us are dry. Look at this high pressure building in Labor Day itself, sun and clouds, 75 to 80, low to mid 70s at the coast. Picture perfect out there. Not the deep summer warmth or humidity, but very pleasant overall. And that's going to last into Tuesday as well. Next chance of precipitation, at least widespread precip, doesn't really come in towards potentially the end of next week. So high temperatures for our Friday, 60s north, 70 to 75 south. Behind the cold front, it's a northwest wind, but it's light enough. It kicks up briefly Friday evening and night, clears the skies out, brings in some cooler air, 40s. Western, central, northern New England, 50s, the farther south you come. So we get these kind of classic cool mornings and mild afternoons, 70 to 75 on Saturday, 60s in the north. Again, the greatest chance of a lingering shower is across northern Vermont, New Hampshire, northern Maine. The rest of us were dry. But again, that northwest breeze, less than 10 miles per hour. So local sea breezes kick in at the coast, and that includes at the beaches if you have plans. Saturday night, nice night for a fire pit and stargazing, mainly clear. Far northern New England still seeing some clouds, widespread 40s even through the interior of southern New England, 50s to near 60 on Cape Cod. Sunday, beautiful, like 72 to 79 across the region. The only spot that may be a little bit cooler is across northern Maine where we hang on to some clouds and maybe a spot shower from down east Maine back up to Aroostook County. Labor Day itself, sun and clouds, once again 75 to 80 degrees. An onshore wind kicks in again. So if you're thinking about a beach day on Labor Day, we'll probably be like low to mid 70s once that onshore breeze kicks in. Low humidity, really pleasant overall. Don't forget the beach and boating forecast, by the way. Golf forecast, our podcast, all this exclusive content included in four different membership levels. If you want to check out which one's right for you, all the info you need is at membership.1degreeoutside.com. We're closing in on 600 members. Let's see if we can get there. Thank you to everybody for your continued support. Thank you.